All right, so to get started on your iRig, we're going to completely start from scratch, so I'll show you how I did all of this. You're going to want to make sure you're on frame zero. That is the frame you build everything on. So we're just going to hide this one right now. And we are going to create a new vector layer. We'll just simply name this white. And the reason we're naming it that is because it's going to be the white of the eye. So one about that big. You can make it bigger if you want to. You're going to want to make your outlines probably black unless you don't want to do any outlines, in which case you can get rid of them that way. Then make the inside, you're going to want to make it white. Unless you're going for like a different look, like maybe a Sith from Star Wars or something. But if you're just doing a generic eye, you obviously want it white. After that, what we're going to do is we are going to duplicate it, shrink it down a little bit. That's about a good size. And then if you want to leave it black to leave it a cartoony look, so this would be pretty cartoony right here, just the black simple eye, that's where you'd go with it. But if you'd want to do a different kind of color, like, I don't know, uh, let's say blue, notice then there's no pupil. So you would also have to grab this again, shrink it down a little more, and that would be your pupil. And something you might want to do is make a darker outline layer on these. Just makes it pop a little more. Uh, that might not be dark enough. Maybe I made the inside too dark. Oh, wait, I know what I did wrong. There we go. So that'll make it pop a little more, give it a little kind of extra color. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take, actually, let's make that a little bigger. Yeah, that's good. Now what we're going to want to do is move this over to about, I'd say there, maybe a little further. And then you want to copy and paste it, and up here in your coordinate section, just get rid of that little minus sign, that little negative. Hit enter, and it'll go directly to the opposite side. If your eye was not centered at the beginning, that's fine. It should have shrunk down correctly as long as you were using the transform tool. That will also keep your line thickness consistent too. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab the, I believe these are called pupils. We're going to want to copy these and then you're using the command C and then delete them. Then you're going to want to create another vector layer. We'll just name this pupil. And then you're going to want to command V or control V if you're on Windows. Just basically paste them in is what you're going to want to do. Once pasted in, you're going to want to group them together. Now that they're grouped together, we'll just name this eyes. And now we're going to mask them. So up here on masking, you're going to want to hit hide all. And what this does, just to show you real quick, notice when they go outside the eyes, you can't see them anymore. So it makes it much cleaner if they're like looking around or looking real far. Now one thing you're going to notice is the black line is gone. You're probably not going to want to want that. You're probably just going to want that to be still a black line, assuming you're making this a cartoon. If you're making it just the white of the eye, you're probably okay, but I'm going to show you how real quick to fix that. Go up here to masking, and you're going to want to do exclude strokes. Hit apply. Now when we render it, notice the black line is now covering it. Oops. Now we're just going to put the pupils back where they were. You can do that by just hitting reset up here, that way you don't have to hit undo a bunch of times and then have to go and reset the black lines in the uh, masking layer. Now that we've got our eyes done, what we're going to want to do next is add a bone layer. So we'll just name this eye rig. We're going to put this inside of it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our bones. The first one is going to be our kind of anchor bone. You're going to want to just put that at a zero x coordinate. And trust me when I say you're going to want it down here. The reason you want it down here is so it doesn't get in your way later. The next one you're going to want is the kind of control for both your eyes. You're going to want that, whoops, why did that go down there? That's interesting, why did that go down there? I wonder what happens if I get rid of this one. Okay, there we go. I don't know why it did that, never seen that before. Now we'll add this one down here just to be simpler. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to want to 
add in the bones here and just keep it identical so there's no confusion. Make sure you line that up just basically centered. Copy and paste it. And then once again, get rid of that negative symbol. Now you've got them in the same place. The next ones we're gonna to wanna to add in is our blink and our color control. And on these, you're actually gonna to wanna to put limiters. So on our first one, we're gonna put some angle controls. Depending on how many colors you want, you may wanna add uh, more to it. But the only reason you'd want a color swapper on an eye rig would be if you've got like a character like Super Saiyan or someone whose eyes change color when they use a power uh, or like if they get possessed like Danny Phantom using his powers or whenever he possesses someone, their eyes change color. That would be the only reason you really want that in your rigs. Otherwise, it's just much simpler just to go into the pupil rig and just modify it there. You could just grab any color off this thing and change it right there. Uh, but yeah, say you have one that frequently does and you don't want to do that for like every other scene, then this would make sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename this to color. And then we're going to show label. And we're going to rename this one to link. I'm going to add its constraints. And then this one, we don't really need it to say anything, but if you want to know what it was, you could just name it anchor. So let me just show that label so we know what it is. Uh, the next thing you want to do is grab all your bones, and then you're going to want to take away all the strength. If you leave the strength up, they will act wacky. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab all these bones right here. And we're going to parent them. I hit P to get access to that. You can also click this icon here to get parenting. And you're going to click it here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this bone and parent it to here. Oh, wait a minute. You don't want these two parented to this bone. You want them parented down here. The reason, if they're parented here, when you move it, oops, I can grab one bone at a time. When you move this, as you can see, all of them move. We only want these two to move when we use that bone. So when you grab this one, this one, and this one, you want to parent them to this. I don't know why this one's parented to this one. Okay, there we go. Let's, oh, because I'm doing it not on frame zero. This is why you do everything on frame zero. Whoops. Okay, oops, wait, I don't want that one, I want this one. Why are you still parenting? There we go, don't know why it wouldn't do that. All right, now we can test it real quick, make sure, there we go, those are only moving. Now if you've noticed the pupils are not moving, that's because we have not added them yet. So you're gonna wanna go into pupils, do bone, so you can hit B to do that, or you can click this icon right here, and then you want to click this or hit I on your key, oh sorry, this or hit I on your keyboard. Then you want to select all these points, hit bind points, then use this tool again, grab this bone, use this tool once more, then grab these, bind points, then we're going to go over to the bone layer. Now on frame one, as you can see, these are starting to move. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is add in our blink. So let's get to that real quick. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is probably make our blink action because it's the most important. So first we're going to select it by using the bone tool, make sure we're on frame zero, and make sure the eye rig layer is selected. If you're on any of the other layers, you're going to get an action instead. So as you can see, that says action one. We want it to say blink. And then we're gonna make a second one the reason is if you try to make it on one layer, it can actually cause glitches sometimes. So always make sure you make two. And you're gonna want them to look like this. So the first one, you're gonna have the middle part on frame one, the end action on frame 24. The reason we want it on frame 24 is standard animation is normally done in about 24 frames a second. Depending on the action you're doing though, sometimes you might want it more, sometimes you might want it less. And then on the second layer, Reset again so it does it on frame one. And then down here, just drag it down. 
then we can go down to our pupil layer, or sorry, our white eye layer. Oops, went down to the wrong one. Okay, go back to frame 24, that is the wrong one. There we go. And then we're on the white eye layer. And we're gonna wanna use the transform tool here. So first we're going to, I'm holding alt and then clicking and dragging down. Once that bottom layer reaches about there, we're just gonna to wanna to drag down the top layer. Now I know the edges look janky, we're going to fix that in a second. So select these points. And then using the curvature tool, we're gonna to drag until it looks somewhat like that. Now as you can see, these aren't exactly smooshed down. For cartoon looks at least, you want these to be as flat as possible. There we go. All right. Now as you can see, as we kind of re, uh, reset them, they might look a little off sometimes. So you can do this by hitting reset. See, they stretched a tiny bit if you didn't notice. So they go back. And then the curvature tool, you also want to just reset. Just trust me, you want, might want to do that every time. Just make sure frame one, even though it's as close as possible a lot of times to the original, this just ensures any jankiness that was there will go away. And that's a pretty clean cartoon blink. All right, so now we're gonna go over to two. Now you're probably wondering, well, how much wider can they get? Well, these are more for like cartoon shock faces. So if you are wanting like their pupils to shrink out of like fear or something, this is a good layer to do it on. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over to pupil and we are going to just grab one of them. And you're gonna want them to probably look normal. Real quick, I'm gonna grab both. You're gonna want them to look normal till about frame six or let's do frame eight. The reason is if this is too close to the bottom and they start to shrink, if you accidentally grab it and go up a little bit when trying to do a blink layer, they'll shrink before he blinks and it looks weird. Now we're gonna go down to frame 12, sorry, 24, and then we're gonna shrink this down. And then we're just going to shrink this one too. All right, those look about the same. So I'm gonna call that good. Then we can go back to the main line. Now we can test our blink. We're on frame one, as you can see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And that shrink looks pretty good, yeah. All right, so that's our blink. Now for color, the options you have here is, well, let's get back to frame one so we can edit. You just wanna probably put in just a simple vector layer and then let's say we were making Super Saiyan, so Goku. You're gonna drag that out there and then put this down here. And we'll color this bright blue. Don't really need an outline for it, but we'll do it a white one. I guess if we do a white one, it wouldn't make much sense. So we'll do kind of a off-white one. And then in this one, we'll just make it this color of blue and this color of blue. So that'll be our kind of eye colors. And then on color itself, we'll grab this. Since we're only doing two colors, I guess we don't need the negative, so we'll get rid of that. And then that way we only have to do one action for it. So back on the rig, back on frame zero, it says color, good. So we'll grab this, reset. Then on frame 24, drag it to there. Color's a little off, so we'll move that up back here. Oh, forgot to name that color. Grab this, drag, oh, we are not on frame zero. Drag it up, good, good. Okay, and then we're gonna go down here to pupil, back to color, and we're gonna grab this one and this one. I guess we also need to grab these. So then we're gonna go over to style. Hit blue, and then these, we don't really need them to be on, but we wanna leave them on so we can get that kind of color right here on the outline. And then the outline on these two, we'll just snag from right here, because it'll be easier. And there we go. Now I'm just realizing I did that on frame one, we did not wanna do that, so we'll drag that up to here. And I think that's good. Just to be safe though, we will reset the colors. 
So grab both of these layers, just grab the outline, grab these two, grab this, and these just are simply black, so we'll just grab black. Let's make sure it carried over. Good, good. So now we'll go back to the eye rig itself, jump out of actions, and now we'll test the entire rig. So on frame one, okay, that looks pretty good. You could also use this for ghost possession, I guess. But yeah, that is simply how to make an eye rig. Now, I know in the intro you saw three colors. If you would want to add a third color, you'd basically just add it right here and then just have it swap to it, similar to how we did here, just on a separate frame, like 12 or something. So we can, no, I'll just let you guys, yeah. So you just add it on 12, add a third color, and then it point to it, and the color eyes would change to that color. But you should probably limit it to two colors just for the reason of it's a lot simpler when animating. Otherwise, you're going to have to cycle through all three colors to get to what you want. So, yeah. Now, say you want to put this on your rig, but you don't want these controls in the way. You actually have an option here. So, if you build the iRig like this first, you then can come down here and you can duplicate this eye layer. Now, what I'd name this one is something like, I don't know, um, reference or control maybe? And then these can be your eyes, so we'll just take away that two. That way you know which ones you're doing. And then for the control ones, you want to do don't render this layer. And then you're going to move your entire rig over to here. And I should have had a face ready to go. Uh, we'll go to frame zero really fast. I'm going to just real quick make a crude face. So, uh, one here named, here we go, skin. I'll do like that, and that's very orange. And close enough. We'll do face, drag it down to here so it's behind all our layers, and then we'll go back to here on frame one. Then we'll grab the eye, not the control, the eye, and then we'll drag it to about here, no, that was right, about here-ish. Now, when you control these eyes, as you can see, it moves them in unison. So that way, if you have a bunch of bones in your face for some reason, or you just don't like the bones to be on the same kind of layer, you can have them somewhere else and control it still perfectly. But yeah, that's how to make a face in Moho.